Hello everybody and welcome back to the Creature Flesh Workshop and this is part three of our making a silicone mask inspired by The Last of Us. So in our previous video we sculpted our secondary forms on top of the primary forms that we did in the video before that. So if you haven't seen part one and part two please go back and check those out. But today we're going to be getting into the really exciting stuff which is the detailing and the tertiary forms, the little skin flaps and wrinkles and all of the things that really make it a hyper realistic mask. So let's get into the video. So this has got to be one of my favorite parts of the entire process. You've taken all the effort to lay down the primary forms, the secondary forms, get a really good foundation. Now we can start to have fun and play around with some of the details. And that's when you can really start to see the finish line. So I'm gonna be using several different tools that you've probably seen before if you've seen our previous videos. We're pretty much done with our big clay ribbon tools. So we're gonna start using some of our finer detailing tools. So we've got things like these dental tools uh, that are actually really, really good for getting into the finer crevices and cracks and making all of those wrinkles. And we've got our smaller clay ribbon tools, which again are great at sculpting those smaller tertiary forms. And then we've got our dotting tools, which are these little guys here. And these are really good for adding texture, things like pore texture, and also for blending very, very small shapes together. So they're pretty cool. And then for the even finer detail, the finest detail, I've got these little tools here, just things that I've made out of an old knife handle and a very small piece of wire, to things like this, which I'll be honest, I don't really know what that was originally used for, but it is very good for quickly creating lots of wrinkles and texture on our sculpt. So I'm gonna start by concentrating on this swollen eye here. So I think it's going to be pretty fun to do and also it's going to be a focal point of our sculpt. So I kind of like the way it looks already but I just want to make it look a little bit puffier and then start to add a little bit more detail and smoothing it out and finishing it off. So I'm going to take some smaller pieces of clay and just start to build up this crease, this line where that eye is swollen shut. These heat guns are really, really good at just softening up the surface of your sculpt. Because it is an oil-based clay, that's one of the great things about it is it's pretty hard when it's cold, but when you warm the surface, it becomes much more pliable. But you don't want to do it too much, otherwise you'll end up with a melted head. Now, possibly one of my favorite tools for this part of the process is one of these. So it's a little piece of pretty hard silicone on the end of a paintbrush. And I think they're just designed for detailing and sculpting, but these are really, really good at blending shapes together and smoothing out hard to reach areas that I couldn't get with my finger. So another technique that I like to use is to get some of this, just a, a piece of plastic. So it has to be fairly thick plastic, the kind of thing that a little bag that you would get a delivery in or something is made out of. But once you've got one of these and then one of our fine tip tools, we can place it over our sculpt and then we can use that to create deeper wrinkles. Now the reason we're using this piece of plastic is because if we were to just use the sculpting tool, that would leave a crater in whatever we're sculpting. And that's not really the way that wrinkles work. If you look close up at a wrinkle, and I've looked at a lot of wrinkles, you'll notice that the skin on either side kind of dips into that wrinkle, that crevice. And what it's not is like a big kind of crater. So that's what this does. When you place the 
plastic over top of the clay, as you run your tool along, it pushes that plastic into the clay, making this kind of nice wrinkled shape. Okay, so this is probably the most fun part of the process, but it is also the most time consuming. So I think we need a time lapse. So I've been concentrating on this side of the face for quite some time now and I've realized that I don't actually like the look of this bit here. I think it's because it doesn't really match up with anything else that I've kind of done on the face. Um, I kind of wanted to make it look a little bit like the top piece where the fungus is kind of poking out and coming through the skin um, but I haven't really carried that on anywhere else so I don't really think it fits in. And I think I prefer the look of this stuff kind of growing on the surface of the skin. I also started playing around with some different looks and uh, not just these kind of mushroom cap type ones. Um, I started to do these ones here where they're kind of poking out 
the skin. Not only have I been looking at reference images from The Last of Us TV show and the video game, I've also been looking at reference images of fungus and what it looks like in real life. So I think I'm probably going to kind of change this bit up, and maybe make it look a little bit more like this. I'm not sure.
So that's it for part three, and that was a really long process, sculpting all of those fine details. The tools that I got and the tools I made really helped out with that. And overall, I'm super happy with the way that it's turned out. The next stage of our process is to create a mold of our sculpture. And that's where we can make a two-part epoxy mold so then we can start to replicate this guy in silicone, which will then turn out to be a wearable mask. But before we get to that stage, we've got lots of preparation to do. So please join us again next time. And as always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next one.